Okay, so hello and welcome back. Uh, so, we will continue our discussion that we were having on uh, plastic ban and if you remember we talked about uh, plastic ban in India and some other countries so far. Now, in, uh, for the remaining part of this uh, particular week, we will be focusing most on China's uh, policy which has an implication throughout the world including India. So, this China short policy, we will talk about that in a little bit in detail and how this is impacting uh, our uh, plastic waste management and not only plastic waste, other waste management issues as well. But uh, for this course, since uh, we are focusing on plastic, we will talk more about that. We may touch upon some other waste stream uh, too. So, let us uh, get started. Uh, so, in terms of this China short policy, uh, China has, a sta has put a National Short 2017, which is the crackdown on waste import. Now, what does that mean is, uh, as you know, that major manufacturing these days happens in developing countries, emerging economies. And China being one of the most important of uh, those emerging economies, there is a lot, lots and lots of manufacture happens in China. If you compare China and India, Chinese uh, are, are much ahead in terms of manufacturing. We, uh, we do a lot of service industry that like softwares and those kind of uh, industry more in India. But in China, it's more of factories. Manufacturing uh, does happens more over there. So, lots of factories. So, factory requires raw material. And when you require raw material, you need raw material from different sources and one of the source is coming from waste material. So, this waste material from developed countries like US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, European Union, once they have collected the recyclables, those recyclables most like a, a good portion of those recyclables used to end up in China uh, for processing and resource recovery and that resource used to go in Chinese manufacturing plants because that is where the demand are in terms of manufacturing. But as China itself is started focusing on recycling within its own country and with a huge population 1.3 billion people, they started having their own recyclables up to a, up to a good quantity. So, that the reliance uh, or the dependence on the recyclables from the foreign countries, from the developed countries are gradually going down. So, so now China wants to take your recyclables only if it is clean. So, they do not will, they, they want that uh, it has to be clean, not the dirty recyclables. So, if you do not do the recycling, sorting and all that source separation is not proper and there is a contamination in the recyclables, they will not take it. So, that is uh, what the whole concept behind this China sort policy and we will discuss this in more detail. So, that is uh, it is kind of they also call it second green fence. So, it is a second green fence uh, as uh, some people call it as a second green fence. So, what is that uh, national short policy? What are the different stuff is in there? So, there are 24 items of waste banned by China uh, that they will not take it into their country. Eight categories of plastic waste. Uh, covering LDPE, HDPE, PET, PVC, PS from living uh, sources like post consumer. So, post consumer plastic waste which has ten, has a chances of more contamination, China said that we will not going to take it. So, that is that these are the waste ban. One type of paper waste which is the unsorted mixed paper, unsorted mixed paper because see if you if you do a lot of sorting that requires a lot of energy, that requires a lot of uh, uh, manpower that requires a lot of money. So, it gets costly to make the waste sorted into different categories and that makes the waste uh, a good value that is uh, the recovered material has a good value is of good quality and of course, you have to uh, invest money to do that. So, there has been a practice of rather than investing money say in Australia or in, in US or in Canada, many, many of these municipalities since they could send those waste to uh, China earlier, they were not and uh, to do those uh, due diligence I may call it uh, within their own jurisdiction was turning out to be costlier than sending it off to China. So, that is uh, that's what uh, they, they were sending this mixed paper. 
and we, we get those unsorted mixed paper even in India. Like I've seen that in, uh, there is one Krishna tissues plant nearby, in near Kolkata area, where uh, I saw some of this uh, waste papers, uh, mixed waste paper coming from UK, coming from Australia, and they produce, they recycle those, and they produce uh, uh, paper tissues and a lot of other products out of that, even uh, packaging paper and all those things. So, but they, uh, they don't want uh, mixed paper. Uh, 11 types of textile waste, so, they don't want textile waste, 11 types, uh, not clothing, and four types of metal slag containing vanadium. So, those were uh, banned. So, so they, uh, so these are, these were totally banned, they don't want those. And they also put a new standard uh, limiting all imported recycled material to a maximum contamination level of 0.5 percent, which is pretty, very st strict. Uh, regulation. Earlier it was, they, their goal was to have 0.3 percent, but then they settled for 0.5 percent. So, what does that mean? Say, if you have 1 kg, 100 kg of uh, recyclable plastic or uh, recyclable paper coming into China, which is being uh, sent to China for recycling and resource recovery, out of the 100 kg, 0.5 kg, 0.5 percent. So, it cannot be more than 0.5 kg of contamination. So, 99.5 kg has to be the clean paper. So, that is a good like a very, very uh, tough demand to meet by many of the unless these uh, recyclable recycling companies in uh, developing countries, all those countries which used to send those plastics or papers and other recyclables to China is start putting lot of efforts on there. So, there is a lot of uh, debate, a lot of term uh, is going on uh, in, in, in the world in terms of this China ban or China's uh, c condition that you need to have, a, you can maximum you can have is 0.5 percent, uh, you cannot have more than that, otherwise your load, will, your load will be rejected, it will be sent back. So, that is creating a, a lot of investment need is going is happening or going to happen in recycling business in uh, these uh, countries like US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand and uh, European Union and other places. So, that is which, whichever used to, so the countries which used to send their uh, recyclables to China and other. And, but in mid in, uh, in interim, while they do all these things in their own country, they are also looking for alternative markets which you talk about. Because of the aftermath of China ban is actually problematic for country like India. Because we will, we will start getting a lot of these contaminated recyclables uh, coming to our country, which uh, will be of, uh, have, which will have a bigger environmental footprint. So, what are the, just look at the timeline, what the date. So, they started, they, they do not, see these things does not happen overnight, it takes time. So, it started in 2013. So, China implements the Operation Green Fence Policy. They uh, enforced existing laws via customs inspection. 0.3 percent contaminated threshold, but 5 percent in practice. So, they were saying that 0.3 percent will go there, but up to 5 percent they were okay, they were taking it. July 2017, China files notification to World Trade Organization, WTO, uh, to ban 24 categories that we just looked uh, in a previous slide uh, by September 2017. November, China notifies WTO of a revision of initial filing, adopting 0.5 percent to 1 percent contamination. Uh, the acceptance threshold for the 24 categories, those which were banned. March 2018, entry into the force of 0.5 percent or to 1 percent contaminated threshold to be strictly enforced. So, this whole thing together is called national short policy, that is what uh, uh, it is uh, it's known as. So, around 0.5 percent uh, is what uh, they are trying to enforce. So, 2013, as we said, there was focus on quality. Uh, they were more on uh, trying to get better plastic. 19, uh, 2017 national short is uh, effort to eliminate illegal waste smuggling. Uh, there was bans on 24 material including mixed paper and, pla and mixed plastics which we saw that. There is a contamination limit they announced that 0.5 percent contamination limit. Uh, there were also suspended license. So, Chinese government began uh, limiting license to close down mills in China which were not following uh, these rules. So, in 2018, which was uh, this past year, in January 2018, bans came in effect, March 0.5 percent contamination limit came in effect. Then there was Operation Blue Sky. 
uh, Chinese customs to inspect all loads at point of entry into China in effect through 2018. May 2018 suspended all inspection of US imports since the inspections are required. All exports to China stopped regardless of quality stressing markets uh, across the globe. So, you cannot uh, send this contaminated stuff to China anymore. June, June 2018, China allowed its shipment with uh, inspection and some ships on, uh, uh, on the water uh, for non banned material. So, in, if you look at uh, uh, some of the other, other uh, like actions, so it started uh, uh, if you initially from 2014, if you look at the timeline 2014 to 2016 then 2017 there was uh, and then 2018 plus. So, 14 to 16 uh, there was China's uh, customs department is were trying to strengthen the supervision of solid waste imports and crack down on a smuggling waste which they used to get a lot of them. Uh, uh, there was impact on uh, poly polyethylene and polypropylene where average demand there was a growth in average demand average volume also grew and uh, there was around 6.5 6.6% 6 growth and you see more uh, volume of uh, those material. Then in 2017 the sword action the goal was to prohibit the smuggling of foreign garbage into China including waste plastic uh, which we just talked about that uh, any uh, th they informed WTO that all imports to solid waste containing environmental hazards are going to be prohibited. And then there was a demand uh, average demand growth uh, in terms of polyethylene and polypropylene as you can see there was a uh, growth in volume. Then uh, post sword action uh, with a complete ban on the import of plastic waste with expect an uplift in the consumption of virgin regions material and more investment in recycling facilities. So, that is uh, there was a growth of around 10 percent uh, volume growth is 2.7 per metric ton polypropylene demand growth was 7.7 percent and the volume growth was 2 million tons. So, with the ban on plastics uh, recyclable, so we got lot of lot virgin materials coming into the market. So, more stuff getting into the market. Of course, somebody has to look at uh, in terms of uh, what is the real, uh, when we talk about this China short ban, uh, what is the real environmental footprint of this whole activity because it is not just what is not coming into China, what is happening with those material now. Uh, some places uh, I have read newspapers reports or the some technical uh, articles report which suggest that many of these are not going to the uh, to the waste to energy plants. So, it is not getting recycled it is going to the waste to energy plant. So, is it really a, uh, a like uh, is it a good thing to do or should we uh, had it been recycled uh, that would have been better. So, we have to come some of uh, this would be a very beautiful uh, the kind of a life cycle analysis uh, kind, kind of exercise where we can see what is the impact of China uh, short ban on, uh, uh, on global recyclable industry and uh, based on the actions that the global recycling industries are taking what is the real environmental benefit. Are we really getting environmental benefit or uh, all, of course, China locally is uh, may, may be benefiting from it, but uh, is it really helping the global environmental cause or uh, or is it a positive uh, development or is it a negative development and so that those things would be interesting to look at. So, if you look at the global economy and uh, uh, in terms of uh, mainland China share of global imports. So, uh, in terms of the import uh, uh, 3 percent like iron and steel since uh, China uh, makes a lot of iron and steel by itself. So, over the past 20 years China has become the primary market for recyclables from across the globe. By 2017, 30 percent of recyclables from the US were exported to China. As their economy grew, they shipped finished goods and products and we filled uh, the containers with recycled material to ship back to China. So, that uh, goods will go to US and the big uh, other big countries, those containers, those shipping containers will fill in the, fill in the recyclable uh, waste and then bring it back to China for processing and uh, reuse. So, as you can see iron and steel import was 3 percent and uh, rest of the world is 97 uh, percent. Then if you look at uh, copper China was importing 55 percent, well rest of the world 45 percent. Then aluminum 24 percent like more than one fourth of the world nearly one fourth. Uh, fibers more than 50 percent, plastic more than 50 percent. So, as you can see in terms of the recyclables uh, iron and steel, copper, aluminum, fiber and plastic 
plastic fibers uh, and uh, copper more and more was getting into uh, China. Now, in, in uh, once with this uh, these rules come into effect, we see that uh, there was a kind of a declining trend in terms of uh, expra, is, is scrap exports to China in 2017-2018. These are values are in metric tons and you do not have to worry too much about the values. We were, what we are looking at is just the trend. So, if you look at from uh, in this particular graph, if we start from January uh, 17 to March 2018, which is a period of uh, around 13-14 months. As you can see and uh, this orange one is our the mixed paper, the blue is the scrap plastic. So, let us look at the blue first and as you can see, so blue has a tendency of kind of going down uh, especially after uh, we have uh, the China ban is, uh, effective, we see kind of a drastic drop and uh, so that is the values uh, going, uh, going down and these values are in metric ton as I said earlier. And similarly, if you look at the mixed paper, they also have a tendency to have kind of a, uh, there was a sharp decline of mixed paper. So, thing is that why there is a decline, this plastic and uh, this uh, recyclables, uh, material recycling facilities in US is not able to keep it clean to the standard that China wants it. So, since they cannot keep it clean, uh, China will not take it. So, only the material which were clean were allowed the material which were not clean was not uh, uh, sent. So, that is uh, export of recyclable has gone down. Now, the question is what will happen to those recyclables in US because US for the last two decades or two and a half decades is uh, uh, or I am just using US as an example, US, Canada, European Union, Australia, New Zealand, all those countries for last two or two to three decades, they have relied on China in terms of managing their waste, in managing their recyclables. Now, all of a sudden if it stops and there is no capacity to handle these kind of waste anymore left in US uh, uh, industry, what will happen to those uh, recyclables? In the interim, they will probably like to go for some other markets like India, Indonesia, Malaysia, which will which will looked at. But at, at the same time, it will force the local industry to grow in this particular area because uh, that's where uh, it, uh, they have to start. Uh, uh, yeah, they have to start uh, like uh, managing their waste within their own boundaries rather than sending it off. So, to to five top five importers to China in 2016, you have. Uh, Hong Kong 43 percent. Now, this Hong Kong business uh, is most of it is actually coming from other developing countries through Hong Kong. So, because there are certain loopholes, uh, all, all the rules and regulation, that is why it kind of makes a huge uh, chunk of it goes through the Hong Kong, but uh, nearly 43 percent. So, that this 43 percent probably coming mostly from US, Canada or European Union and other places. So, Japan 20 percent, US 17 percent, Thailand 11 percent and uh, Germany is 9 percent. So, that is the importer of uh, waste coming into China. In China. So, to the top 5 export destination for top 5 historical exporters. So, if you look at the historical exporters from Germany, most of it goes to China, part of it just goes uh, managed in other European countries as well and uh, India 6 percent, uh, the orange uh, the yellowish orange pie is the Indian pie. So, you can see that it is around 6 percent for uh, uh, for the German export, uh, German waste export, USA uh, 5 percent for India, China is 56 percent. So, that is a lot of uh, uh, 56 percent of the uh, recyclables are going to China. Canada uh, little bit 3 percent, Hong Kong and is around 32 percent, most of it will again end up to China. So, this uh, as you can this, uh, this number is uh, again pop, most of it will end up showing up in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in China as well. So, as you can see China uh, is kind of dominating 56 percent for 30, 69 percent, 56 percent and Japan again uh, 17 percent and then they also have 8 percent here which part of it will uh, may end up over there as well. And Vietnam 26 percent, Taiwan, South Korea. So, now with China gone of this uh, pie uh, of most of for, for most part or the value is going very low. Uh, for the other destinations, obvious destinations that you see is uh, Taiwan, Vietnam, India, Mexico, uh, 
Uh, those are the countries where you start seeing many of these recyclables uh, being ending up. Uh, so that's uh, what's kind of a little bit of concern as uh, because in India we don't have the infrastructure to deal with these recyclables. Uh, if we get uh, right now a lot of these recyclables coming in to handle and process. So, we will have a lot of environmental issues associated with that as well. So, Mexico uh, in terms of what they sent to 5 export destination for the top 5 historical exporter. Mexico uh, they are sending uh, around uh, uh, 38 percent to China, uh, 55 percent to US because that is in the border area probably they are uh, managing it in the United States, uh, Canada, Taiwan and Hong Kong uh, because the US has the capacity to, man to manage that. So, that is probably why it is ending up over there. If you look at the UK, Germany 53 percent, China 3 percent, Netherlands 7 Hong Kong 12 and France is 15 percent or 25 percent. So, Hong Kong is again part, kind of partly going through the China as well. Germany uh, because uh, they are using uh, they have a lot of recycling facilities and all that. UK struggles with uh, waste management a little bit as compared to the other European countries. So, it, they do send a lot of stuff to other European countries to manage. So, if you look at the uh, ranking of the World Bank regional groups based on the cumulative exports and imports of plastic waste from 1988 uh, to 2016. So, so, kind of from the very beginning to the very recent uh, data. So, there are uh, different uh, uh, regions have been identified. A EAP is our uh, East, East Asia and Pacific, ECA is Eastern and Central Asia, NA is uh, uh, North America, uh, LSE is Latin America and the Caribbeans. Then there are some unspecified MENA is the Middle East and North Africa, SAR is South Asia and uh, FAFR is Africa. So, that is what you have the list on, on, on your, uh, on, your uh, on the table on the left as you can see. So these are the different regions that is being identified over there. So, and then for each of those there is a trade value, there is the mass and then the percent total and so this is on export. Then there is also one on imports where the same regions have been given uh, mass and percent of total. So, if you just look at quickly on this particular table. So, for uh, if you go by exports first. So, in exports as you can see our East Asia and Pacific uh, kind of leads it. So, the, the ranking is also there on the left most on the both the table that is the ranking. So, 44 percent, uh, 44 percent is uh, is the export from uh, East Asia and Pacific. Uh, and compared to if you look at the import, uh, East Asia and Pacific also imports 75 percent. So, although it exports 44 percent, but it imports 75 percent. So, net actually becomes more of an import rather than an export. Uh, so, that is uh, where we, we have a kind of a gap almost 31 percent gap between imports and exports. So, which is uh, that is which not very healthy because that is what leads to a lot of uh, uh, problem in terms of foreign currency reserves and all that. So, next uh, that uh, ECA which is the Eastern and Central Asia which kind of is in the middle on both uh, the table in the second position on both the table. And so, import uh, export is 32 percent and the import is 16 percent. So, that is uh, that's, that's actually better. Then uh, North Africa 14 percent is uh, uh, the export, then 5.2 percent is the import, then LSE which is uh, Latin American Caribbean and uh, unspecified MENA. So, for each of those reasons you can see there is uh, and this is for export and import of plastic waste. So, it depends on uh, your usage in this area for plastic uh, as well. So, uh, in for both the examples we see that there is a substantial amount of uh, plastic waste which is coming from East Asia and Pacific uh, be being exported as well as imported and there are other countries out there as well. So, being said that uh, if you look at also the compo ranking of World Bank economic groups based on the cumulative exports and imports of plastic waste. So, here high income group upper middle middle group, lower middle group and low income group based on 2015 GDP or G, called GNI which is the gross national income. So, if you can divide that uh, what we see is 
uh, this high income group has nearly 87 percent values in terms of uh, uh, exports uh, that is happening. So, high income group is able to spend more time in terms of separation of the garbage and all that and making it convenient for to be recycled. Then upper income is around 10 percent, 9.2 percent, lower mid income is 2.8 percent. Then we have a, a low income based uh, group that is it is around 0.1 percent. So, similarly, if you look at the import part, uh, we have uh, again uh, HIC, which is the high income group, 49 percent, and that low income group is close to 0 percent or 1 percent. So, what does it mean is uh, it uh, essentially is trying to tell us that uh, it, if you look at uh, uh, like financially, the countries which are a bit financially well off, they have uh, more money to spend. So, and then those countries you see more uh, progress those who are still struggling with poverty and all those kind of stuff, they struggle in terms of uh, 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 delivering uh, uh, this uh, uh, waste management facilities. So, that is uh, why, where we do not get uh, the numbers. So, the numbers are pretty low or numbers are in the informal sector, we do not have those numbers uh, in, a, in a government database or any report which we can use. Now, if you look at uh, ranking of countries based on cumulative export for each plastic waste polymer classification for again from 1988 to 2016. So, here if you look at uh, PE, PS, PVA, PVC and other plastics. So, you have uh, uh, Hong Kong uh, and uh, Hong Kong uh, which is uh, uh, gets a lot of uh, business along that line. So, we have uh, cumulative net weight uh, for uh, other plastics in Hong Kong is 34.4 million metric tons. So, uh, and then PE is around 13.6, Hong Kong SAR is 3.78 and then Hong Kong SAR another one is 4.35 for PS and PVC. So, uh, PE 13.6, polystyrene 3.78, PVC is 4.35 and these are all million metric tons. So, that is uh, uh, in terms of the different ones, uh, then you have the US, Japan, Mexico, Netherlands, Germany. France, Canada, Thailand and Belgium. So, as you can see in terms of the top 10 exporters, they do add up uh, uh, to around 91.2 million metric tons for uh, other plastic, 56.4 metric million metric tons for polystyrene, poly, polyethylene, then we have polyesterolene and then we have the PVC. So, it is uh, in terms of the polymer classification, uh, polymer uh, criteria for promoter classification criteria from 1988 to 2016, we see that uh, there are uh, uh, the, there are different countries which are exporting uh, of, uh, of the garbage as well as the importing uh, the garbage of uh, plastic waste uh, from different sources. Now, if you look at the same uh, similar examples based on uh, uh, like for the European Union itself like Belgium, Netherlands and then some other countries like US, Australia, Germany, UK, Hong Kong and Thailand. So, as you can see over here from 2010 to 2017, uh, we see that the biggest chunk actually coming from the grey which is the Germany, then the yellow which is Hong, uh, Thailand and uh, as well as the Hong Kong. So, you uh, and of course, uh, uh, Belgium, United States, they are kind of pretty uh, at the bottom over there. So, what does this mean is uh, if you look at for each plastic type, uh, there are different countries which are using at two different levels and then they kind of gets uh, exported imported from one country to the another. Now, ranking of countries based on cumulative import of each plastic waste. So, if you look at the, that the earlier one was on uh, export. Now, if you look at the import, China leads the pack uh, uh, most part, then we have Hong Kong, then US also imports certain types of plastic and uh, we have India there, we have uh, Italy, we have ca Canada, Sweden, Belgium. So, for other plastics, then poly polyethylene PE, again uh, you have those similar names, Hong Kong, Netherlands, Belgium, Canada, Malaysia. Similar polystyrene, similar names are there, PVC also similar names are there. So, it basically is trying to tell you that although there are uh, plastic uh, waste, uh, pe pe people are worried about the exporting of it, but there are many countries which are import these plastic waste fiber as well uh, for usage different industry. So, let us look at this last slide and then we will stop. So, if you look at a uh, have to make an estimate 
of percentage of imported plastic to be managed in China from say 2010 to 2016. You look at your uh, waste uh, population, waste generation rate, percentage of plastic in uh, waste stream and based on that we can uh, plastic waste generated is this much and then based on how much plastic is getting into China. So, that is the imported recycled waste. So, we get a total recycled waste and out of that percentage of plastic waste that is imported is around 12 percent. So, so that is uh, we are getting a lot of plastic waste not from within the country, but from also outside the country. So, and then with this China ban, these things have got a little bit of disturbed. So, there is will be a lot of realignment going to happen It's already happening in terms of uh, you know, getting these back on track. So, with that let us stop in this particular video. So, we will uh, 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 continue this discussion in the next video. So, hope you are enjoying uh, the course so far and any question put it on the discussion forum and uh, thank you and I will see you again in the next video.